Well, a new study finds most American corporations receive failing grades when it comes to religious freedom and free speech. Alliance Defending Freedom reviewed the policies of 75 major American corporations and found disregard for religious freedom and free speech in virtually all 75. Meanwhile, only eight companies improved their score from last year. The study examined three aspects that include policies toward the consumer, policies toward employees, and political spending. And joining us now is Jeremy Tedesco, Senior Vice President for Corporate Engagement at Alliance Defending Freedom. Jeremy, great to have you with us. Um, let's talk a little bit more about this study and what stood out the most to you. Sure. Well, the Viewpoint Diversity Score Business Index is the first comprehensive study and measure of corporate respect for free speech and religious freedom. So we put it out for the first time last year. This is our second edition. Um, and I think what stood out is what you mentioned. While you said only eight companies improved their scores, I actually think it's really impressive that we had eight companies go up year over year on their scores. One of those companies went up by over 32 points. Um, and in, in the key to these companies increasing their scores on our index, at least at the initial stages, is to fill out a survey we send to each one of these companies each year, the companies we score, um, and just disclose information about their policies and practices of the practices that impact free speech and religious freedom. And that's why the two companies got the highest score this year, received those high scores, because they were transparent and disclosed to us information that uh, got them higher scores on the index. Yes, yeah, speaking of those companies uh, that improve their scores, can you tell us maybe a little bit about them? I mean, I don't know if you can tell us who they are, but what are the improvements that they made? What did they do differently? Yeah, the two companies that improved their scores the most were Fidelity Information Services, which is a payment processor, and M&T Bank, which everybody pretty much knows who M&T Bank is. Um, in both instances, their scores went up immediately when they filled out our survey. And with Fidelity Information Services, they identified several policies that we just couldn't find online um, that were favorable to free speech. Um, and, and to religious freedom. And so, you know, they were able to confirm that certain practices as they, uh, especially as they treated their workforce, um, were far better than we could uh, discern just from looking at what was available to us through their websites and other public information. So, but you know, the flip side of this is there's still an enormous problem in corporate America when it comes to respect for free speech and religious freedom. While we had some good improvements, we had, you know, most of the companies were down, you know, below 15% on the index. And so there's a long way to go, but this is uh, a long-term process and we're, we're dedicated to incremental wins over time. Yeah. And can you, you know, maybe give us some examples of the companies that didn't do so well, examples of what they're not doing right? Yeah, well, the biggest problem in these corporations is that they have vague policies that give them unbounded discretion to debank or deplatform people or cancel their services. And so essentially they can they can deplatform people because of their views, uh, religious or political views. Um, and the worst part about it is they can do it without having to own it because the policies are so broad, so vague um, that they never have to admit that it was a viewpoint based reason. So you know, the problem that's happening right now that we're most concerned about is that banks are really starting to become weaponized, just like social media companies have been over the last four or five years. Everybody knows that social media companies are censoring content online um, and that in many instances, that censorship is aimed at religious and conservative people. Well, banks have the exact same or very similar kinds of policies as social media companies, vague policies that are aimed at hate or aimed at intolerance or aimed at reputational risk. And banks are starting to use those policies to, to, to debank people. Um, and JP Morgan Chase is the perfect example of this. There's about four instances in the last few years where it looks like they debanked major religious organizations and some small ones too because of their religious beliefs because there's no other reason that adds up to why those customers no longer have bank accounts at chase jeremy you know what do you hope comes from this study well what we want to do is inspire change in corporate america so you know our goal is to be constructive partners with them this isn't a name and shame campaign. This is a campaign to help them understand where they're falling below the line, uh, 
And then we, we source them with uh, you know, upwards of 15 model policies, practices, and guidelines. We will work directly with the companies and have in some instances um, to identify problems and gaps and to make recommendations about how they can close those gaps. You know, in the end, what we want is a business culture that's respectful of free speech and religious freedom, um, and that takes seriously their responsibility as culture-shaping institutions to give back in a, to the community in a way that builds up a culture of free speech and religious freedom for everyone. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today about this. We appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you.